Known as the Evergreen Forest, one of the richest, most exciting realms on Earth, filled with millions of plants and animal species, this is the tropical rainforest, home to the Malayan sun bear, or known as the Helactos malayanus, the smallest member of the bear family that loves to climb, play, and craves sweet food. Its name is derived from the crescent marking on its chest, just like the rising sun. These markings are unique for each individual, like a fingerprint. Seed dispersers, pest control, creating shelter for some other forest species. They play an important role in the ecosystem and help keep the forest healthy. Unfortunately, their population in the wild is depleting. Habitat loss due to forest fragmentation. Poaching. Roadkill. Private ownership as pets. It is unknown how many sun bears are left today in the wild. They are listed as vulnerable to extinction and are considered as threatened in the IUCN Red List. They are a totally protected species under the Wildlife Conservation Act 2010, and this means that the species must be protected before it's too late for a chance of survival in the wild. In 2015, four prominent institutions have joined forces under the Sun Bear Conservation to protect sun bears in Malaysia. The Department of Wildlife and National Parks Peninsula Malaysia they are responsible for the protection, management and preservation of wildlife and national parks in Peninsular Malaysia. The National Wildlife Rescue Centre, NWRC, is the entity that is mainly involved in the rehabilitation and release. FGV Holdings Berhad, they are the world's largest producer of crude palm oil with a strong commitment to sustainability and smallholder inclusion. The sole funder of the sun bear conservation in Peninsular Malaysia, the Malaysian Nature Society, pioneering conservation for the last eight decades in habitat advocacy and environmental education. They create awareness and established the first Sun Bear Citizen Action Group in Malaysia. And the National University of Malaysia, driving the entire research and management of the Sun Bear conservation. They are one of the six research universities in Malaysia and among the most prestigious universities in Southeast Asia. The sun bear conservation is grounded on the 3R approach. Rescue, rehabilitate and release as many sun bears as possible back into the wild. This approach has proven to be effective in managing human-bear conflict. When a conflict is reported to the Department of Wildlife, it will then be verified for the need of a rescue mission. If needed, a team will be assembled and dispatched to the site. As the team arrives at the site, the team will be looking out for claw marks, footprint traces, scat or other signs of a sun bear foraging nearby. The team then sets up the cage and monitors for days, weeks, sometimes even for three months. When the bear is caught, the team must decide on the next step very quickly before the bear becomes agitated. In most cases, the bears are translocated or released back into the wild. But if they are a cub, injured or malnourished, they will be rescued and brought back to the NWRC. It is a calculated rescue move with emphasis on the best interest of the bear to ensure a safe transfer to the center. It is a wonderful moment for the rescue team. Now, it's just a matter of giving them time to settle in at the sanctuary. Every rescued bear 
must be quarantined and monitored closely for 45 days. They must be free from infectious diseases and other health issues. If the bear passes all of the tests and is healthy, the bear will then proceed for rehabilitation if needed. Depending on the condition of the bear, the bear keeper may spend from three months to more than a year to rehabilitate them before the release. The 24-acre National Wildlife Rescue Center can accommodate up to 12 sun bears for rehabilitation at a time. Its outdoor enclosure is an open space that is designed for maximum freedom for sun bears. To mimic its natural habitat, furniture is introduced as part of the enrichment program. Logs, wild fruits and coconut husks are some of the furniture that help accelerate their development. And most importantly, to avoid boredom in enclosures. A balanced diet is vital to regaining their health. Using only CCTV to monitor, limiting human interaction and noise is key to rewilding their instincts. Bagi beruang matahari di dalam kurungan, kami akan melaksanakan sistem badi ataupun sistem kawanan yang mana beberapa ekor beruang ditempatkan bersama bagi menggalakkan aktiviti sosial antara beruang. Dengan cara itu, Beruang juvenal dan separa dewasa dapat belajar kemahiran adaptasi daripada beruang yang lebih dewasa. Sama seperti mereka berada di habitat semula jadi. Ia termasuklah kemahiran untuk mencari makanan, memanjat atau bahkan melawan. Ini adalah petanda yang sangat baik untuk memastikan kelangsungan hidup beruang matahari di habitat liar setelah dilepaskan. While behavioral assessment and evaluation of development such as body scores are done daily, these wild bears shouldn't be in captivity for too long. It would only impede their explorative learning progress to survive and adapt in the wild. This is why, as soon as they complete their specific assessments, they are ready to be released, usually between 18 and 24 months old. Before the release, isolation must be done. This will be the final health screening by the veterinarian to ensure that the bears do not introduce any form of disease into the wild population. Site recce of the release location must also be done to ensure the site is free from poachers and are at least 20 kilometers away from human settlements. Thorough SOP briefing must be done before departure and upon arrival. Transportation usually takes place at night, while the release happens first thing in the morning which is common for nocturnal species like the sun bears. Okay, untuk operasi kali ini, kita akan lepaskan tiga ekor beruang matahari uh, yang mana telah berada dengan kita hampir dua tahun lah uh, dalam jagaan kita. Um, dan kita mengharapkan uh, tiga ekor beruang yang kita lepaskan ini dapat hidup lah. Dapat hidup uh, di habitat asalnya. Um, dan untuk meneruskan lah, kata kesinambungan, kehidupan uh, beruang matahari di dalam hutan di Malaysia lah. But the long-distance journey is never easy. The team must keep an eye on the bears almost every hour. The safety of wildlife officers and the sun bears is a priority. Thanks to the quick action of a local villager who reported the sighting at Felda Bukit Easter in Kota Tinggi, Johor. Mat Dan, which was once in critical condition, will now be roaming the wilderness once more. Medang and Medang Junior are no exception. Just like Mat Dan, they are given a new future. The wild is where they belong. But this is not the end of their efforts. To ensure the survival and adaptability of the rehabilitated and released sun bears, further monitoring must be done. Using camera traps, microchips, GPS collars or shaved fur in the shape of numbers to identify the bear from afar. 
The post-release monitoring usually takes about one to two months or until they establish a stable home range for the whole mission to be deemed completed. In efforts to mitigate the human-bear conflict, five Sun-Bear citizen action groups have been established in our local community throughout Malaysia. They are the Friends of Sun-Bears, solving environmental and wildlife issues in their vicinity, preventing illegal hunting and poaching of Sun-Bears. They are the eyes and ears of the forest, empowering more and more people to do the right thing. The Sun Bear Conservation Initiative has released 58 rehabilitated sun bears into the wild as of 2021. FGV will remain committed to continuing our collaborative conservation efforts in protecting these sun bears and other wildlife species. What was once never spoken about is now known as a conflict. The human population is increasing. The forest area is decreasing. The encounters between humans and animals are becoming more regular. And this is inevitable. The question is, are we going to continue looking at it as a conflict, to see these animals as a threat, or use them for our benefits? We can't eliminate the conflict, but we can manage it better. And the answer is to find a way for us to coexist and live together in this world that we share.